All right, let's get this started. So hi, I'm Andrew Bragdon, and together with my colleague, uh, Brett Grinslade, we're going to be tag teaming together today. We're here to talk to you guys about making data-driven, high-impact decisions to your applications, uh, and improvements, that is, with uh, application insights. So um, we actually have a very uh, hands-on talk for you today. It's going to be virtually all demos. I have about three slides to get through, and then I promise going to be straight into the demos. And we're going to be demoing a bunch of brand new functionality that is actually just shipped. So we're really excited to be sharing that with you today. Um, just to tell you a little bit about myself before we get started so you know who I am, uh, I'm a program manager on the Application Insights team. Uh, I did a lot of work on the Application Insights tools for Visual Studio. And uh, before that, I owned uh, developer visualization for Visual Studio. And I worked on a lot of features in that uh, area, like uh, Code Lens, which showed uh, contextual information above each method and class uh, in the Visual Studio Editor. And that shipped in Visual Studio Ultimate. And I did some other related features, like Code Map, for example, uh, which are very much uh, in that vein. I also come from a research background. And um, when I was in research, um, man, there's a lot of noise above the stage. <laughs> Um, there's, uh, I came from a research background, and um, I had a particular focus on information visualization and applying that to developer productivity problems. And so uh, what you'll see uh, here today is very much in that vein. So like I promised, it's going to be very uh, hands-on, demo-oriented today, and we're really excited to be showing you some of that. But first, I just want to frame the problem a little bit. I just got two, three slides here. So, We've observed a number of kind of key uh, challenges to modern application development that have surfaced um, recently and that we've seen that come together to really create a problem for our customers. The first is, and by itself it's not necessarily a problem, is that um, even for teams that are quite small, you tend to see a phenomenon where not every uh, developer on the team knows all of the code. And not only that, but even when you union together the knowledge of all the developers on the team, and you take it as a whole, even all the developers taken together don't know all of the code. And the reason is that you often see where you know, a developer who owned a key area maybe leaves and goes to another team, and there's a new hire to replace them. Or there's an area that was invested in for a while, but is now um, you know, old and hasn't been touched for a long time. And so people don't have fresh knowledge about it. At the same time, we've seen the advent of agile software development. And with that, teams working in a very lean and continuous mode. Um, and at the same time, with the advent of cloud computing, we've seen uh, continuous delivery really start to become the norm. And what you see is teams very rapidly shipping functionality out to their customers very rapidly. So taken together, these by themselves are actually not a problem. But there is a fourth issue, which is that once the developer actually publishes their content or their application, um, once they you know, right-click on the project and choose Publish, very, very frequently the developers have virtually no telemetry or visibility into production. They can't tell uh, what's going on with their applications once they get them out, out the door. And when you combine this with the other issues, it makes it very, very difficult to figure out, is my application up? If it is up, is it getting used? If it's getting used, is it performing right? Um, and if there is a problem, it can be very, very difficult to actually figure out what's going on. So what we want to do is we wanted to look at that problem. And in particular, we wanted to look at how can we provide visibility into uh, your application once you get it in production. And in thinking about it, there are really kind of th three key questions that we think come together that are very common that virtually all developers ask when they run into this. The first question is, is my application available? Um, you know, can, and this is the most basic question probably, can customers actually reach my application? Can they actually get to it? Can they actually um, access it quickly? And not just uh, you know, uh, in one market, but in all the different regions around the world. You know, maybe my North America users can access my app fine, but it's really slow for folks in Europe. At the same time, even if my application is available, I need to know, is it performing? 
You know, and by performing, I mean, is it responding quickly to customer asks? You know, when customers make requests and they click buttons in my application, are they getting a fast response time that's acceptable? You know, is that flood of traffic that's coming in from Reddit, is that pegging all the CPUs on all my servers at 100% and now I'm getting really slow response time? Um, there's another version of that, which is even if my app is performing well and even if it's available, it may be generating a lot of errors. Maybe a lot of customers are seeing exceptions. Maybe um, a lot of uh, issues are coming up where there's you know, uh, missing pages or just plain errors getting shown to the customer. So that's another key aspect of performance. The, last, the third question is maybe the hardest question, which is if your app is available and your app is performing and it's working to spec, is it succeeding? Are you meeting your business objectives for the application? You know, are your goals for um, application development um, outside of the immediate technical aspects, are they being met? Um, are enough customers making it through your sign-up flow? Are enough customers um, converting from Lite to Pro if you have a mobile game app under development? Are you getting what you need in terms of in-app purchases. If you have a shopping cart, are you generating enough revenue in your different categories? Um, this, is, this is a really key question. And so we think when you take these three questions together, these are three really deep areas that we can provide a lot of value in. And so Application Insights is a new cloud service that's available as part of Visual Studio Online. You can go try it out today. And in fact, everything that you see demoed in this talk today is available uh, for you to try, and we'll give you some pointers about how to do that. App Insights is really designed to solve these three questions and to do so deeply and really get you what you need in each of the three areas. So the first is, um, I want to know if my app is available. So we have a, a number of different things you can do there. The simplest is you can create what we call a ping test, which is um, you can give us an endpoint or a set of endpoints. And we can ping it from our points of presence all around the world and make sure that it's responding and that it's responding quickly. You can actually take that to the next level if you want to exercise your application and make sure that key functionality is actually running in production. You can exercise key transactions and look at the result and make sure that it's the right result. And you do that by authoring a web test and uploading it to our cloud platform where we can run those tests for you. And in fact, we have a really rich and deep off offering in availability. And there's a talk uh, on day three of the conference that Vlad will be doing, and here's the details, um, where he'll be going into availability testing with App Insights in great detail. The next area that, that we're looking at is, is my app performing? So it's available, but it's kind of slow. Or it's kind of slow sometimes, and I'm not sure when that is or why that is. So we actually have some really deep offerings here where you can uh, take an, an agent, you can install it into your server, and the agent will monitor your applications and transmit telemetry back to our cloud service that tells you a lot about what's going on. For example, it can tell you the, your average request time, and it can even break that down. Within that, how much of that time is spent in the database? How much of that time is spent waiting for Azure blob storage? And you don't even have to be using Azure. You could be running in a VM on-premise, for example. How is that application performing? Um, how much uh, CPU is getting used? How much memory is getting used? And you can uh, set thresholds, and there are great automatic thresholds there that will detect when your application is performing slowly and capture some additional telemetry automatically at the code level for you to figure out where it's slowing down. Also, if a lot of errors or exceptions are getting generated in production, it will catch that and surface it back uh, up to you. So that's actually another uh, really deep area of App Insights where we have a lot of great functionality. And Brett and Vlad will be giving a talk tomorrow uh, just across the hall here that will be going into that in a lot of detail with a particular focus around uh, web applications and the services behind a mobile application. The third area is the area we're going to be covering today. And that is, is my application succeeding? You know, um, let's say you just shipped a brand new feature into your app, 
recently. Could be your mobile app, could be your web app, could be both. And you want to figure out, is it meeting your targets? Maybe only five people have found it, and that's, that's really bad, because you had a target of uh, you know, at least 20% of customers using it. So if you have a problem like that, you not only need to identify the problem, but you need to figure out why. Why is our, pe our people's behavior or customers' behavior different than you expect? Or if you are meeting your goals, how can you take your business to the next level? How can you find those opportunities and make targeted investments based on data? So that's going to really be the focus today. And as a service within Visual Studio Online, the developer experience is really, really important to us. We want to deliver a world-class, best-of-breed solution here for developers, where authoring custom telemetry is incredibly easy. We want to make it so easy that it's something that you can actually start out with at the very beginning of your development lifecycle or add it at the end, and you can adopt it uh, in, in layers in a very, very easy way. So a key part of that is um, a new set of tools that we've recently shipped called Application Insights Tools for Visual Studio. Whoops, let me type that in right. So if I search you know, my favorite search engine, and we're going to have a some links up later on where you can go directly to download this. If you search for Application Insights Tools for Visual Studio, this is actually up on the gallery right now. And I can go ahead and I can actually download it right here. And even over you know, conference Wi-Fi, it's actually under 2 megabyte download, super lightweight, easy to acquire. It's a V6, and it's one click to install. You know, just I agree. Go ahead and install that. It takes under one second to install. And once you've got the Application Insights tools for Visual Studio, it's really, really easy to try out Application Insights. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. Before I do, I just want to make one point, which is that the tools will work with any developer SKU of Visual Studio, so Ultimate, Premium, Professional, and in fact, even the Express SKUs. Many V6s don't work with the Express SKUs, but we work with the Web Express and the Device Express SKUs of Visual Studio. So once I've installed it, another important point is that you don't actually need a Visual Studio Online account or any previous signing up for App Insights. It's a completely standalone. All you need is a Microsoft account, aka Windows Live ID. And if you have that, you can just get started. The tools will do the rest. So in this case, I want to show you how easy it is to just try App Insights. And first, I'll show you web, and then I'll also show you how to do it for a device application. Super easy. So I just go into File New Project. This is the normal you know, Visual Studio File New Project that you guys know and love. And I've got this extra checkbox over here, Add Application Insights to Project. Now, if I don't already have an Application Insights account, it's going to actually create one for me automatically. So um, in this case, I'm signed in to Connected IDE in Visual Studio. And I use that to sync my settings and set up my licensing information. You can also click Use a Different Account, and you can input any, like if, for example, you wanted to have a, a company account versus a personal account or vice versa, you can absolutely do that. And logging in here won't affect your connected IDE sign-in. We know that's really important for a lot of customers, so I want to point that out. But in this case, um, even if you don't have an App Insights account, we'll automatically create one and attach it to your live ID for you. So you don't need to sign up ahead of time. You just download the tools and get started from there. So here, as a customer, all I have to do is click OK, the way I normally would. I don't have to do any additional clicks. It's a zero clicks experience. And from the very beginning, I already have App Insights. We also support uh, the different templates in here for ASP.NET. So I'm going to choose Web Forms, but it will work equally well for MVC or an empty app. If I go ahead and hit OK, it's going to do a few things for me. The first is it's going to automatically you know, create my ASP.NET application. And then after that, it's going to do a few extra steps. If I don't have an App Insights account, it's going to automatically create one for me and attach it to my Live ID. If I do already have one, um, it's going to go ahead and create a container in the cloud within the App Insights services infrastructure. And that container is going to store all the data captured from your application. Then what it does is it creates this application insights.config file and adds it to your project. 
And this file contains all the access keys necessary for this application to transmit the data back to App Insights, OK? And to transmit it specifically back to that newly created data container that is named after this application. You can change the name, but the default is, uh, is the app name. It does a couple other things. It also adds the App Insights ASP.NET services SDK into your project and configures it and bootstraps it. It then also configures the JavaScript uh, client telemetry SDK. So one of these SDKs runs on the server side and captures data automatically about the server and what's going on there. The other runs in the web browser of the customer and automatically captures data there. So all I have to do, actually, is press run. So again, it's a zero clicks experience. You're not going to find any, any service that's easier to try, probably, than this one. You just do File New Project, do your normal workflow, no extra clicks, and you press Run. When I do that, you know, this is IS Express, so it's running my application. Now, what I want to show you guys is if I go back to Visual Studio, I can actually, App Insights is so fast that I can actually verify that the data has already arrived in the cloud already. So if I double click on the dashboard, which was automatically created as part of the setup process, you can see here I've got a tile called Development Feed, and it's actually already got telemetry in it. So let me just click on that to show you guys. If I drag this off to the side and I bring up the, this is, this is the web app I ran, right? You can see that it's already captured three telemetry events, and they've already made it from my computer here, my development machine, all the way up into the App Insights services, all the way through our data pipeline, and into the App Insights web portal. And I can already see it here. And this view is actually a live view. And the total lag time from transmission to appearing in the live view is two to three seconds. So let me show you guys how that works. If I just start navigating around in this um, you know, default ASP.NET app, go into different pages, you can see on the right-hand side, it's already starting to stream that data in live directly into my portal. So I can actually confirm that the telemetry is working end to end. All that data is being captured and sent back to the cloud and is arriving there successfully. Another thing I'll point out for you guys real quick is you can see there's a source column. And some of the data is coming from the server. And some of the data is coming from the browser. So the first event that was sent is called application started. That happens one time every time your web application is booted up. Essentially, the application pool start. The next event is session started. That happens when your ASP.NET session starts up. And then these remaining events, the browser ones, are triggered by the uh, JavaScript SDK running in the customer's browser. There's a little snippet of extra JavaScript code there that is running and capturing data about your app and how your customers are using it and transmitting that back automatically. So this is all free telemetry, basically. I just did file new project, no extra work, and I got this. A couple other things to point out here is that, and Brett will be speaking to this later on, we capture a whole bunch of additional telemetry automatically about um, the screen resolution of the browser, the referring URLs, um, uh, what browser they're using. A lot of kind of additional metadata automatically is captured and stored, and you can then analyze that uh, in, in the portal. So what I want to show you guys now is how easy it is to actually take that baseline free telemetry, which you have to do no work to get, and extend it to have just a little bit more intelligence. You know, maybe there is a key transaction that's really important to your application. Maybe, um, for example, there's a shopping cart button. And every time a certain button in that page is clicked, you want a specific event that is sent uh, that you as a developer have authored some intelligence into that you know is important. So that's actually super easy to do. Um, just to save time, I've pre-typed this code. But it's actually only one line of code. And I can just put this anywhere I want, anywhere in my web application. For simplicity, I'm just going to paste it into page load in the contact page. But in fact, you can paste it anywhere. It could be in your, all the way in your back end class libraries if you want. In this case, you can see I've got a little red squiggle. So let me just fix that by adding the using statement. Now this is very simple. It says server analytics.currentrequest.log event. 
And you can see it's taking in an event name. In App Insights, we uh, allow you to organize your events using forward slashes, sort of like folders. So the name of this event is actually world. And that's inside a parent item called hello, which is inside a parent item called server one. And it's actually really, really easy to now go debug this because the pipeline is, is so fast and optimized for the development scenario. I can just run my application. And by the way, I'll demo this in a second. You can run this in other browsers, Chrome, Safari, et cetera. It will work just fine. I'm going to run my application. And when I do so, in addition to the automatic telemetry that's being captured and transmitted, this new custom event that I just wrote is going to get sent too. So I can just open my dashboard here and start to see that. So you can actually see it's already there. I'm going to click on the tile so you can see a, a bigger version. Here it is, server one, hello world. And interestingly, you can see that the source is the server. And that's because I wrote it in the ASP.NET code. You can, of course, write it in the JavaScript side as well. Um, and there's a, you would write that in JavaScript. I just happen to be demoing today ASP.NET. So you can do either side. You can do both. Um, and you can verify that it's working end to end. So that's cool. But suppose that actually you want something a little more advanced. You don't want to just know when a particular event happened. You want to know, for example, when someone did a checkout operation in your app, how much money did they spend? OK, so let's try going to a different page. So let me go to About. I'm going to go to the Page Load event. This time, I'm going to capture uh, two lines of code. And actually, it, doesn't, it can be one line of code. I'm just showing it as two lines of code for kind of clarity purposes. Again, let me fix my little using statement here. Now, notice that the line of code is the same, serveranalytics.currentrequest.logEvent. And this time, it takes two uh, parameters. If I flip back to the previous page, this one takes one, right? The second parameter is this properties object, which is just, as you can see here, is just a regular dictionary. And it maps strings, uh, in this case, to number. So price um, <clears throat> and an amount. So I'm going to change that to 100, just to make it a little more obvious. And again, it's as easy as pressing F5. I just run my application. Nothing extra. I don't have to put it into development mode or anything. I just run it. I don't have to wait 15 minutes like some of our competitors for the data to make it all the way up there. It's two to three seconds. And uh, when this page loads, um, I'm going to just go ahead and open my uh, dashboard again. And once that loads up, I'm just going to, it's actually, it looks like it's here already, you can see server one, hello world. And this time, it has a metric price of 100. So now, and Brett will show this later on, I can do things like I can graph this amount over time. I can compare it against other amounts. I can do a running total and pin a tile onto my dashboard that says you made $8,000 today. Um, but I can actually extend it even more. And I also want to show just how easy it is uh, to do that. Whoops. So this time, I'm going to switch to Chrome just to show that it works in other browsers. And I'm going to show, suppose that you don't just want to know when they checked out from the shopping cart, and you don't just want to know the amount. You also want to know, say, the customer type. You know, were they an enterprise customer or a consumer customer? Or really just any other type of metadata that you might want to filter or aggregate on. I can just come in here and add more data. So I'm going to say customer type, and let's say for the purposes of example, that they're an enterprise customer. Also, maybe I decide, you know what? I don't want to call my event this. I want to call it something else. I want to call it backend slash shopping cart. So I just change it, run my application. This time, it's going to run in a third-party web browser. And again, I just have to wait for IIS Express to load up. If you're using local IIS, it'll be faster. Um, I just happen to be using IIS Express. Once that loads up, it's now going to emit that new version of the telemetry I authored. And I can actually just switch right back over here to um, my dashboard, open that up, and confirm that, in fact, it's working. And there you see, back end shopping cart. If I click, it's already here. And if I expand this out for you guys, you can see customer type is enterprise, and the price is 100. I can also see a little further down in the list, you know, before when I had authored it the other way, right? So you can now go do that segmentation later. Hey, I want to know the total, but just for enterprise. 
or I want to know the total for consumer, or I want to know the total for consumer and pro but not enterprise, or I want to graph them side by side, you know, all these kinds of things. I've captured the telemetry, it's that easy, and then I can analyze it after the fact. So Brett's going to be showing a lot of the cool analysis capabilities in just a bit. Um, and also, you can see that it's working you know, in a third-party web browser. So we saw this for ASP.NET. And this will work for MVC. It'll work for um, you know, web forms, et cetera, et cetera. You can also do both JavaScript and ASP.NET. But what about device applications? Well, I can just do File New Project. And I'm going to pick Windows Store. And I'm going to pick a Hub application actually work with any of these templates, though. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit OK. I'm just going to create a test Windows Store application. And again, just like before, from the very beginning, I have telemetry. Telemetry isn't something I need to add on and learn about later. It's there in my application at the very beginning. And it provides a free baseline level of telemetry capture already that's already useful. You don't have to go write custom code to get value out of it. It's already there. So there is one little trick you need to do for uh, store apps. I need to switch the platform to x86. That's a current limitation that we are very seriously looking at addressing. But right now, I can go ahead and run my application. And this time, you know, completely different stack. It's running in the Windows 8.1 simulator. You know, this is just normal uh, hub application, right? If I come back to Visual Studio and I open my dashboard, Notice that this dashboard is named after this component by default. I've already got one raw event here. If I drill into this, see the details. I've got Windows Store application telemetry, application launched. And in fact, as Brett will show a little later on, there's a whole bunch of additional built-in free metadata that comes with that, like what device make and model was the customer running? What was the screen resolution? What was the application version? What was the operating system version? All that kind of stuff. Um, in addition, a unique GUID for that application uh, user uh, that is anonymized but stable. So you can track things like loyalty, new users versus returning users, things like that. All of that is built in here automatically and captured automatically from the very beginning. So the last thing I want to show real quick is if I come in here and I actually go to Recent Solutions and you know, you may already have code, right? And you want to add App Insights to that. We've also made a bunch of investments to make that super easy and Visual Studio centric. So I just come in here. This is my existing app, which doesn't have Application Insights. It happens to be a web app, but you can absolutely do this for phone and store apps too. And I'm just going to right click and choose Add Application Insights. It's that easy. And I get this dialog. Just like before, you do not have to have a Visual Studio Online account. And you do not have to have uh, any experience with Application Insights. All you have to have is a Windows Live ID. And if you're not signed into Connected ID in Visual Studio, that's fine, too. You can sign in here, and it will be local to just App Insights. In this case, though, I'm already signed in. I'm good to go. All I have to do is click the blue button. Done. And this is going to automatically analyze my project and uh, very robustly add Application Insights in. It's going to add the appropriate NuGet packages. It's going to create the applicationinsights.config file. It's going to inject all the appropriate keys in there dynamically for my specific component, a data container. And I'm now good to go. This application now has um, the telemetry that I need, and it's all automatic. No kind of manual steps required. Also, you never have to leave Visual Studio, including the, uh, the sign-up process. So flipping back over here, if you guys want to try this out, you can download Application Insights tools for Visual Studio. Um, this is a kind of Microsoft shortened URL format. And it's like I said, it's a v6. It's under 2 megabytes. It's super easy to download and install. And um, you can try it out you know, on, a, on a new project, on an existing project. And it's, it's very, very easy. So with that, what I want to do is I want to turn it over to Brett, um, who's going to show you, OK, once you capture this telemetry, whether it's just the automatic telemetry that you get for free, or whether it's manual additional telemetry that you've authored as a developer on top of that, 
what can you do with it once you get it up into the application inside cloud? How can you analyze it, visualize it, and use it to make data-driven decisions on your application? So Brett, you want to take it away? Great. OK, we switched over already. Perfect. Um, so uh, just a quick question. How many folks out there already have uh, applications instrumented with telemetry of some kind? OK, great. I figured you wanted to come to this session to kind of see what we're doing. Uh, how many folks also think that uh, what they've seen from Andrew today would be an uh, easier way to get started than what you've been doing before? It's, uh, OK, we, we hope that. So one of the key points you know, Andrew made, but we should reinforce, our goal, uh, and one of the reasons we're talking about it at Build, is to really help developers with the development process and the development cycle. So we want to hear from you, have you guys try to use it out, and um, you know, tell, us, tell us how it's working. I have a couple slides I'll go through real quick. Um, my name is Brett Grenslade. I've been at Microsoft for a little while, kind of moved up the stack from Windows through Visual Studio, Bing, and Dynamics, and now I'm working on this Application Insights project. Turns out that just about every big project I've worked on on Microsoft has had a telemetry uh, component of some kind. And um, you know, we're finally starting to bring some of those assets together to make this available to all of our customers. So uh, we're hoping that it'll be useful to you guys. Um, the other thing is, um, you know, what, just a quick note on why to do this. You, know, that you, you start out, you're having an argument with your uh, teammates on whether something's going to work. You stay up late at night coding up some new feature. You push it out, and then no one shows up to use it. Or maybe it's slow, or maybe it has performance problems. So like, this is a little mental map for me of why we're, we're doing application insights and what you guys should get out of it. So, um, you know, And the, the other thing is a lot of times people tell us things like, you know, especially internally, we're talking to the developers about Im improving instrumentation. And they tell us things like it's too hard, or we don't have time, or it's too hard to change. And so we're trying to get rid of all those problems. That's, that's our long-term goal. So we really want to make it work for you uh, in, in kind of a DevOps type of environment. So let me get right into some demos then. I'll try to leave some time for questions at the end here. So uh, if you have some questions or if you need to ask some questions as we go. Uh, so the first thing I want to just show you is this is some applications that have some of the instrumentation that Andrew was talking about. I'll kind of show you how they work on the portal today. Um, uh, w w one quick example is this is just an app I, I built a few minutes ago, and uh, I want to show you some things that are in this application. There's some stuff at the bottom here like response time and availability. You'll need to come to the session I have with Vlad tomorrow or Vlad's session on Friday to kind of learn about, more about those. We're going to stay on kind of the how to make your application successful. Um, so let's jump into an area here real quick. Actually, let me, let me show you some of the things that you get for free first. Um, Andrew talked about, you know, if you don't do much work, then you will get some stuff. So the first thing I'll do is I'll show you like a web application and the kind of things that you would get for free from a web application. So let's just jump right in. One of the first things that you get for free is uh, kind of user behavior. And you know, are people coming to your application? Are they returning to your application? What's their engagement level look like? So this is a, a blog site. If you guys know Aaron Stebner's blog, if you've had a .NET framework problem, you've probably seen his blog at some point in your career. And uh, he gets a pretty good amount of traffic. You'll notice some things because it's a blog site. Uh, most of his traffic is new users, people coming in for the first time and reading one of his blog posts to do troubleshooting. Um, they don't do much on the site. They look at one or two pages. It looks like Google and Bing are doing a pretty good job. They land on the first page, and that's what they use. Um, and customers don't really come back to this application much. Uh, let's look at a couple of other things you get kind of for free. Um, operating systems, you'll see you know, what kind of uh, environment your customers are working in, which, which OSs they're using. Uh, you can look and see what browsers uh, your customers are, are using. You'll see Chrome has a pretty good upgrade rate. Internet Explorer, uh, it's a little bit more dicey there. Old versions of Internet Explorer show out there. This is pretty useful. Um, for example, you're having that discussion with your management or your test team. Uh, you know, which, which browsers can we cut support for? When, when should we do that? And so you can look at these kind of trends. It's handy to have this uh, built in, even if you didn't bother to take any, uh, do anything to get telemetry for that. Uh, worldwide, you know, you see what your audience looks like. You can see where people are coming from. Uh, Aaron has quite a few people from Europe. Uh, you can drill down and see uh, data at, uh, a lot of times we'll have, depending on the accuracy of the, uh, of the lookups, we'll often have data down to the city level. Uh, and that can be useful, especially if you have a, a location-aware application, you need to understand where people are using your application from. Uh, another area would be something like referral sources. Um, 
you know, which websites are sending you traffic for a web application. This doesn't, obviously doesn't apply to a device application. You can see he gets a lot of uh, referrals from MSDN, uh, also some stuff from Twitter. And um, you can look at things like the language distribution and decide, you know, do you need to do localization, and things like that. So these are kind of some of the things you can get for free. There's quite a bit more data in the stream that we're going to keep leveraging and exposing every few sprints. So we're like the TFS Online project, VS Visual Studio Online, we update the product every few months. So something to keep, you know, if you start using the product, you'll see new features come out uh, as, we, as we release them. Uh, let me just uh, jump into another app real quick. Um, this is an application uh, for the, the event. I don't know if you guys have downloaded it, but the Blue Fragments folks have put together a good uh, application. There's actually two. There's one from uh, ch uh, Channel 9 that you can look up that has kind of the, the videos and some Twitter feeds. The, the Blue Fragments app, it's called, uh, I don't remember the exact name of it. B build, it's the build app. You'll see it has like a little white icon. And, um, the, uh, you know, you can look at your sessions in there and kind of see what's going on. So let's just look at a little bit of free things in here, and then I'll show you some more interesting pieces. So if I jump into something like the usage, you'll see this is a good example. Uh, you know, we just launched this application, and as we would expect, users are taking off and growing. One of the things you'll see here, though, is that um, there's a quite a bit more return uh, usage, and you'd expect that for a client application for a specific conference, right? So this is very different than like a, a website that's a one-time type of hit. You'll also notice that this is a pretty good app. These guys have done a good job. There's a lot of different screens people go into, and they, they spend a lot of time digging around in the application to kind of figure out what, which session they want to see and, and things like that. Um, but let's look at a couple other environment things real quick. Operating systems, again, there's a Windows Store app version. There's a Windows 8 app version. Um, you might want to look at uh, screen resolution. This give you an idea of how, how wide you can make your applications or what kind of orientations that you can use. Right now, we're actually not exposing the orientation data very well here, but that's something that's coming in the backlog. Um, you can look and see what kind of network uh, customers are on when they're using your application. So this is not the network they have available, but this is actually while they're running your application, what, what type of network uh, they're using. And you can see a lot of people are on Wi-Fi, but quite a few of the customers are on um, uh, cellular networks. And a little bit of offline usage, which is kind of interesting. Um, you can look at devices. This will give you an idea of the actual model numbers. You can see that 877 seems to be the winner. Um, uh, and uh, we're going to keep uh, improving this to give you more information about the devices. For example, on the backlog, we have items like uh, whether it has a camera, things like that. So, but, but we have the actual device model you can start with so you can understand the properties uh, that your customers have. The geo data, again, uh, languages. So, so just to give you an idea that you get a lot of information. This is all what you would get if you did no other work aside from what just Andrew showed. You put the base telemetry in, do the VSIX, do, do nothing else, you'll get all this information. So we'd really like you, even if you have other applications that already have some telemetry, we'd love for you guys to try this out on all your applications and give us feedback, because really that feedback from you guys is what will help us uh, improve this product and make it really a developer-focused offering. Um, while I'm in here, though, let me show you a couple of the things really quick. Um, for, first, we have a, you know, you can understand what the overall sort of uh, most important, most uh, common areas of the product are. So like in this case, let me, let's just kind of compare how the different, um, days are doing. So these are the pages that represent a particular day of sessions. So let's just see what people are looking at. Um, they're mostly looking at day one. Kind of makes sense, I guess, because uh, it's day one, and that's you got to get your sessions out. So that kind of makes sense. Um, just let me go back to the dashboard. I'll show you one thing that bothered me in the dashboard. So one of, one of the things I wanted to point out is that one of the features we've invested in quite heavily, in addition to being able to do the V6 um, to make it easy to add telemetry, is we're really trying to make it a part of your workflow. So we're in Visual Studio Online. Is if you're using like a you know if you're using that system for your source code or for bugs, it's easy to kind of go back and forth between them. And we've invested a lot in this dashboarding infrastructure, so you can build. Uh, custom dashboards that meet you know, your different uh, activities. You might have a business dashboard. You might have an operational dashboard. You might have multiple dashboards for one application. In this case, you'll see I've char charted a few things. Uh, one is the number of users per day, uh, sessions and activities that the users are doing. So that's, that, that, that's pretty good. Uh, this conference load, let, let's take a look at that one real quick. This is an example that kind of Andrew talked about, is you can use, um, in, in this case, actually, let me drill into it real quick. There's an API, actually, I don't think he showed. Um, I might have it up here. Uh, you can also do a, um, 
what's called a log timed event. Let's see, I have it here. So you can basically do a timed event, which is a, a wrapper around a particular method or function you can do. So the Blue Fragments guys have added this here to this, um, to this load behavior. That's when you start up the app and it loads in you know, information about the sessions and things like that. So you can see there's been a bunch of downloads. Let's kind of see how the downloads have been performing. OK, so this gives you the idea of the frequency. So a bunch of spikes here. Um, let me zoom this in a little bit. And you'll see that uh, you know, this gives you an idea of what the duration is. So the, 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 the metric wasn't passed in this particular case, but the duration flag was set. And you can see that in some cases it was really fast. And then in some cases, actually took quite a bit of time in this one little spike. There was another spike over here. This one seems relatively correlated with the load. Uh, this one just seems like. Uh, you know, something, one device maybe had a problem or something. Um, in, in Vlad's session, we'll talk a little bit about our search experience, but you'll, in, in the, depending on how you've done your instrumentation, you'll be able to go through to log kind of data to be able to look in more detail at exactly what happened in that particular instance where something was slow. Uh, so it's a good plug to go to see the session that I'll do with Vlad. Um, one other thing bothered me about this dashboard, though, is, you know, uh, I have Andrew's uh, keynote on here. This is a and or Andrew's session that, that's covered on here, but my session's not covered on here. So let me drill through on this and show you kind of how how you use this dashboarding infrastructure. Uh, so if I find myself on this list here somewhere, uh, I've had uh, 125 people. That's not too bad. I guess some of you guys are in here probably. Uh, let's go ahead and just pin that and see if it goes up after the. Uh, after we have this session and people get excited about the next session we'll do with Vlad. So if I just pin that to my dashboard, you'll see I get, um, you know, it's, it's that easy to go, you know, do some pinning. I can do a few things like edit the way this looks and change the format, or I can delete it, which I didn't mean to do, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll undo here. Watch, I think I can undo. Yes, I saved myself. Great, great feature. The, uh, so you can go and you can change the size of these to see some different kind of visualizations. Um, and uh, in this case, I'm just going to put it right here next to uh, Andrew. And uh, Andrew, probably the only reason I'm beating you is I think I added a few myself here. So about that's um, OK. So that gives you an idea of some of the kind of features. You can look at timed events. You can look at uh, the kind of default telemetry. Uh, let me um, just show you a few more details in this other application, just to give you an idea of kind of how this works. The, the, the main thing I'm trying to uh, want you guys to kind of think about is, uh, you know, doing that kind of development that Andrew showed, where you add some telemetry, you go look in the F5 in the, what we call the development feed window, and you can see exactly what telemetry you're passing and making sure that it matches up. If you've done telemetry before, a lot of times that's a hard cycle, and you get in production and things don't look exactly the way you wanted them to. So we really want you to kind of get through that during the development cycle and get the, the devs you know, I interacting very much with the telemetry itself. Um, we also want to have you guys get some ideas of things you might do for um, how to instrument your application. So I'll show you two more things real quick. Um, I'll look in Aaron's blog. And I'll look at the page views here. OK, so um, we, Andrew talked a little bit about this hierarchy behavior. So one of the default things that we do is if you have like an MVC app, we'll take the routes from, the behavior, uh, that, from your page name, and we'll just turn those into folders to make it easy for you to kind of see how things are working. So for example, if you want to see for Aaron's blog, you know, what his most popular years are, it's nicely categorized, and, and the developer really didn't do any extra work. Just use the routing model that was already in their framework. You know, if your framework has a different routing model or you have a different way you think about your application, you can always override that and put your own paths in. Um, but you can see in this case, it's pretty easy to tell that Aaron's most popular time window is this uh, 2008. And I think he has some blog posts in there about uh, .NET framework repair, and I guess that's uh, pretty important. Um, let me show you one more item under here. I added some events. These aren't really Aaron's events. I just added them as a demo um, to Aaron's blog data here. So we talked about adding those properties. One of the ways you can use the properties is you can actually do something like filter. So in this case, I've selected uh, for this particular demo app that I was using that I had instrumented. Um, it's a, like a browser app where you look at different uh, users. And I logged which division that of Microsoft you're coming from. So you can filter that data out and kind of see what the difference is between you know, the overall or the uh, individual users. 
Um, another tr kind of trick in a way that I did is that you, those uh, event names don't have to be something like just a plain old name like button click. You can do something more interesting. So in this case, what I did is I wired it up to a uh, search box, and every time that I did a search, I just made the search term that the user typed in the, the parameter for the event. And what you can see is now it's easy for me to tell that I had seven sessions where I did searches. I had 25 different times that I searched, and you can see the detail for each particular search string. So you could imagine there's a lot of different scenarios where you can take data from your application and just pass that into the name. So we have this very simple model where you don't have to predefine schemas and things like that to get all your telemetry to work. So that's part of the, the point of this, uh, this method. Um, and then I already showed you how to look at some data around uh, duration. So probably I'll skip that piece and leave a little bit of time for questions. Um, the last thing I was going to show you is an application that I don't have time to kind of show you, but there's an app called uh, Office Remote. I don't know if you guys have used it, uh, but it's a little application that lets you look at PowerPoints and things like that. So I was going to show you uh, a couple things they've done here. One is they've kind of modeled their funnel here with just a nice simple dashboard. You can see this is when people are kind of pairing with the Bluetooth. It's one of the more challenging pieces of the application. You know, it's a great app and it works really well, but you had to go through a couple steps to get it uh, uh, paired. This is like a dog food version of it, I think, and this shows you kind of what their, their funnel is. Um, the other thing you can look at is, say, for example, um, that timed event. I'll show you another, uh, another use of that. So I'm just drilling through into that timed event. And um, what they're doing is, I, I don't remember exactly what this duration means in this case, but this is also, they're just wrapping the way that the laser's used, how long the laser's being used while you're uh, demoing and things like that. So this is just little details that they've identified about their application. Um, and if you pop up a level here to all their events, uh, you can see they've done quite a few interesting things like power, memory, device. So there's some stuff that we would eventually get for free, uh, but you're not limited to pull that data right now. You can start adding your own telemetry uh, and, and pulling that kind of information um, out. And I'm going to end with one last little case study. Um, let me just go through some tips here. So the tips and tricks for the telemetry are, you know, start right now. It's easy. Uh, be sure to do debugging with that stream window. It's super handy. Uh, you want to create dashboards because you know, it'll make it easier for you to find information in your telemetry. It'll make it easier for people to kind of put that at a glance. One of the features that you'll see around the, um, in some of the displays, you'll see we have these displays around that have App Insights data coming from some applications, that, the, the Blue Fragments application, also from uh, some of the MSDN blogs and things like that. And we just put those on big screens in here, and there's a, like a display mode in that dashboard. Um, and you know, it's, it's, in a DevOps environment, uh, it's really handy to have these screens in your, you know, your team rooms and have stuff kind of coming by that's coming from your production applications or even from your like, test runs and things like that. You can use a different key for, say, your production run and your test run, and you can see the stress data coming through and that kind of stuff. So it's, it's really handy to do. Use the custom telemetry. That's how you'll get a lot more power than just the baseline. Um, you know, use those metrics and durations. If you want to learn about crashes, performance, logging, availability, those are in the other sessions. Uh, so I'll do a couple more slides here real quick just to tell this case study. Um, uh, we have this application called Office Lens. Has anybody in the audience used uh, Office Lens yet? A few people. It's a great application. I recommend downloading it. If you haven't tried it, it's really fun. And it, it basically uh, takes in things like whiteboards and receipts and makes them really easy to see, and then it'll load them right into your OneNote for you. Right? So all my receipts for Build are all already in my OneNote, so I'm really happy. Um, these guys have instrumented their application with um, application insights, and I'll just show you an example of some of the questions they had. So they had this big launch uh, that came out when OneNote was launched and, and OneNote for the Mac, and, um, but they didn't know if people would come back. Like, was it a one-time thing? So that was one of their big questions. They didn't have promotion outside of English for the launch, and they didn't really know exactly how people were bringing up their particular apps. So these are some example questions. So, this is like a chart from when they first launched, and you'll see they actually kept getting new users, but they had a lot of returning users, which they were very happy about. That's the returning user uh, trend here. I was one slide behind. Um, and then uh, in terms of launching the app, you know, one of the questions they had is, are people using that lenses feature where you come in kind of from the side and, and come into the, their application? And the answer is pretty definitively no. About, uh, you know, in this case, this particular period, it was uh, pretty pretty dramatically weighted toward um, the normal launch pattern. 
Uh, and you can see that this is the, uh, on a little more detail of how they're launching the application. So that was a really critical, is a critical feature for them because as you guys have probably experienced, you know, you have to invest in your application in different areas. You can't support all the, do all, everything you want, all the parts of your code. So having that kind of data in your, uh, you know, before you do your sprint planning and you go through your backlog to really know which things people are using, where they're seeing errors, you know, where you're having performance problems, having that kind of data-driven decision making is really helpful in your, your planning. Um, then another question they had was uh, actually, are people using this device when they're connected or mostly when they're offline? And it turns out, in their case, almost everybody's connected when they're actually using the application. So maybe they're using it at work, or maybe they are happy to use their, their, um, you know, their uh, data plan for it. Um, the last uh, question that they were going to answer is, you know, do they, do they have a problem only having their first launch information in English? Currently, they don't have a problem. They're getting good growth worldwide. They're still a new app, so they, you know, they'll eventually do more marketing. But th this at least gets them some worldwide coverage, and they can feel comfortable they're getting users from all around the world. Um, you know, so they, they, they were able to use this uh, application insights. It's, been, it's still in preview, but it's uh, currently available to all of you. You can use it through Visual Studio Online. And you can take a really sizable application, such as this one. And we have some other big apps at Microsoft that are using this as well. And so it's, it's, uh, it's built to scale to your application, whatever it might be. Um, the last thing I'm supposed to mention here for you guys is that we have like a, a, a contest or an opportunity. If you uh, put the VSIX on and go by the booth upstairs on the third floor, there's an application insights area up there. You can uh, let them know that you put that on. If you're sending data, you can be entered in either to get a, a mouse and uh, there's a drawing for, a, uh, for some cool Bluetooth headphones for an Xbox. So that's really the, the, the end of our presentation. We have a few minutes for questions. Yeah, thanks very much for your attention. And yeah, and there's, try, there's some microphones. Do try out the uh, yeah. Do try out the V6. If you just in your browser go to aka.ms/aiv6. It's a less than two megabyte download. Super easy to try it out. And like we said, you know, you don't need Visual Studio Online or Application Insights to get started. Looks like we have a question over here. Uh, yes. In the past, I remember being asked by certain desktop applications for my permission to gather user data. I'm wondering if that's a completely outdated practice, or are there any circumstances under which you should ask the user's permission in order to gather this? Yeah, I mean, the, the um, you know, obviously we're not attorneys, so you guys have, have your own counsel, but the, uh, the, there are a bunch of practices that are pretty common now. They're in uh, Windows uh, 8.1 and Windows Phone. There is a, there's like an overall privacy setting, and our SDKs honor that privacy setting. Uh, it is the best practice, at least for Microsoft, that whenever you uh, install your application, let people know that you have a customer improvement program and to collect data around that. And obviously, websites usually often will do things in terms of services and things like that. But um, you know, at, from my point of view, just as a consumer, I would like you guys to ask me, and I'll always say yes. So. Looks like we have a question here in the middle. Um, does it have any impact on the performance with the integration of application inside? Uh, it's a great question. Uh, the, you know, there is some small performance impact, but we've worked very hard to make it extremely small. I believe on a Windows Phone device, and I, I'm kind of going out on a limb here to quote it, but it was something like um, less than uh, a, a millisecond performance impact per transaction. You know, it, it depends on what you log. Obviously, if you do a thousand log lines and have, you know. 100K of data that you're logging, and something's going to have to happen. But things like, for example, on the store and the Windows phone, the data is actually logged locally, um, and it's uploaded on a background thread. And it actually will, you know, there, there's settings that will let you control whether it goes up on Wi-Fi only to pr preserve the user's battery and things like that. So there's a lot of control that lets you control both the performance and the uh, impact. I mean. We're, we're developers. We're from the developer division. You know, one of our goals is to make this a really efficient method for you to do things. And in the future, we're looking at you know better integration with other technologies in the Windows stack that already do a lot of uh, things like this really well. So I think you can look forward to those kinds of improved uh, improvements in the future. And on, oh, the, on the web side, there is similar controls. I think you guys saw the applicationinsights.config file that I showed. So it's sort of a very simple XML file that has comments on each line. You can totally control things like you know, data limits and aggregation windows and frequency for transmission, things like that. Yeah, one other note that I just want to make about the privacy question is that all the IDs that we use are per, for you, as a developer, they're your IDs. So 
if like two different applications install on the same phone or the same website, the, the IDs are not shared. So they're not considered, from an industry perspective, they're not considered like advertising IDs. That's not the type of uh, data that we collect. Um, you know, so that we, we, any data that we generate automatically is always anonymized. I think we have a question over here. Uh, yeah, in terms of uh, web services, telemetry, for example, is, is there a way, uh, is it automatic or not, to have a separation of uh, this is the telemetry for this version of the service or this is the telemetry for this other version of the service? Or yeah, there's basically two methods that you can do for that. So uh, one of the reports I didn't show you is that we call application version. So one of our native kind of properties that we use in a lot of different places, the version of the application, very important for client applications and for version services. And so if your deployment has a version ID, then you can use that as a kind of a, a way to partition that data uh, or to segment that data. If you don't have that, say for example, you run multiple versions of the service at the same time that have different compatibility modes or something like that, then uh, what I'd recommend is adding an attribute, which would be something like you know, API version you know, XYZ, and then you can use that as a, as, a, as a way to segment the data and differentiate I, behavior. And Another thing this? just to chime in on that is um, if you turn on a flag in Visual Studio, which we can show you if you come up after, um, when you build, your project, a bunch of metadata will be recorded into your binary that says basically what TFS version number did you come from, what build information goes into it, and then when you actually publish uh, your service, application insights will visualize lines in, in those graph views showing you when the deployments occurred so you can actually figure out what happened when and what version do I need to go to to debug this and you know, all that kind of awesome. stuff. Awesome. Thank you. There's a question over here. So what about normal desktop applications, like the OPF? What's built in, what isn't, uh, what do you get for free? So for desktop applications today, uh, we don't currently have a built-in offering. If you come up and see us after, though, I can show you some workarounds for that. There are actually ways to still achieve that, uh, even if you're building a WPF app. Yeah. So does this tool work for both Silverlight and Zemo model? In Windows 8.1, we got Silverlight and XAML. Did you say, does it work for Silverlight and XAML? Was it both? Work for both? Or was it XAML? It works only? for XAML. Um, Silverlight, I have to take your, if you come up after, we can get you in touch with the right folks that can give you a definitive answer on that. OK, I have another question. Is, so we see we can collect the data. We can see user if he's using 3G or 2G, things like that. Can we use this information in the app? Was it there an API? It, currently, there isn't a way to access the data that we have in the portal from your application at runtime. You mean something like, for example, I showed you the top set speakers list, for example. Um, you can't retrieve that data through an API right now. Uh, but we'd be interested in your feedback about what, you, what scenarios you'd want us to support. And so, um, yeah. uh -uh. Okay. like. If user are using my app to download something, and he's in 3G, yeah. we can have three to four tasks to go in simultaneously. Sure. If it's 2G, we just do one. Sure. Yeah. Uh, what I'd recommend is what we do is uh, it's a good scenario. We we actually use user voice pretty actively. So if you'll go out and post some suggestions, to user voice, and get your friends to vote them up, we'll we'll uh, we'll start looking at those. So. Thank you. Thank you. How much does this service cost? Currently, the service is in preview, and there is no charge for the service. We will, um, you know, in the future, we'll have some premium services that will provide you a lot more additional benefit. That you know, it's, it's kind of the Azure model where we'll have some things that work for free. This current stuff, everything we showed you today, is in the in the the freemium version today in our preview, and we will, uh, you know, evolve the premium features as we as we go along. Just to chime in on that. Uh even if you are in the free tier of Visual Studio Online, you can use all the functionality in App Insights for free. And there's a... Uh... OK, so we're getting cut off, guys, and we're over. So we'll take questions afterwards over here. Thank you so much. Yeah, if you guys want to come up. Thank you.